flashing lights I grab my phone I wanna check what's going on I wanna know what the saying What's the outfit of the day I heart you and you like me What a word Oh, Laura. And your family was very much involved in arts, isn't it? Your father was, a, uh, was in the movie business mm -hmm. and theater business. Yes. And your mother, I think we should mention it, <laughs> he was, I think, three or four times was he on this festival. Yes, she's come here many times. She yeah. says hello. Your <laughs> mother <laughs> is Didi Bridgewater. Das, mm. um, so how was it growing up in such a family? Interesting. Interesting. Um, like any family with very strong personalities, you know, it's it it, it was a ride, a, a wonderful roller coaster of emotions, arts, you know, and uh, wonderful heated discussions. <laughs> But no, very very good. My parents uh, both encouraged me to do what I dreamed. My my siblings also. I have two sisters and a brother. Um, and we all work in the arts. We all work in music. You all do? Yes, we all do. My brother, who is 20, 21 or 22, oh my goodness, I'm bad. Um, he plays guitar. He's at Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Plays guitar, drums, bass, sings. He's a rock star. <laughs> and uh, my older sister, Talani, she manages my mother, but she sings also and plays guitar. And my other sister, Sia, she's in TV production. So the whole family, it's like, you know, a family of doctors or lawyers or, you know, we're, we're, you know, the media and the arts is our thing. So it was really, it was really uh, wonderful. I got to live in France um, and in New York uh, because my parents divorced when I was young. So I got to go back and forth and see both of their worlds and meet a lot of incredible, incredible people. So, I mean, when you have a... A babysitter, you know, I, my mom often tells me that Chaka Khan used to babysit me and, you know, uh, a wonderful actor, uh, Benny Luke, uh, he was, you know, babysat me and my, my brother's godfather is Michael Peters, who was the choreographer for Michael Jackson. And, you know, you just live in this wonderful world with all these colorful, very eccentric, very strong-willed people. And uh, you learn how to find your place. I think you have to learn how <laughs> to find your place and how to find your voice, yeah, your, yeah. your personality. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. My mother, um, my mother is the reason why I, I'm singing. Um, she's the one who believed in me. I didn't really think that I could sing. What? No. no and I couldn't sing when I was little. I, I sang off key. I wanted to be... A, Uh, a film editor. I wanted to be behind the scenes. I wanted to produce shows and make movies and write musicals. And uh, my mother um, pushed me into into music. And uh, when I was 16, when I was 15, I signed my first contract with Virgin Records in France. So I've been singing since I was professionally since I was 15, and with the full support of my family. So it's been wonderful. Tonight you will be here with blues songs, isn't I'll, it true? I'll be here with a lot of different songs. I'm here tonight with a new project that I fully wrote and composed. Um, all original songs I wrote and composed with a wonderful producer and musician whose name is Anthony Marshall, and he's from the R&B world. He produces people like Britney Spears and Craig David and Nelly Furtado and... Um, but he's from the gospel world, and uh, I'm from jazz and, and soul, and we kind of meet in this world, this mixture of, of black American music. So uh, I recorded the album in October, last October. I wrote it and recorded it in last October. And so this is really fresh, new, and, uh, and exciting, because it's my voice. I've... I, I've done six, this is my sixth album, 
And my first three albums were original compositions, but it was more like pop, R&B, and soul. And then I did two jazz albums, two tributes. And uh, now I think I finally have found my voice. It took me all this time. People don't realize how long it can take you to find what you really want to do. <laughs> Why did I start on that door? You got hold on me and I can't let go. The album is titled Breaking Point. What does yes. it mean, Breaking Point? Well, Breaking Point, um, in doctor's terms, is actually the moment when you have like a psychotic break, when you go into deep depression. Um, it's actually a point of no return where everything kind of breaks down. And I, I've often thought that it's a, it's a very negative way of, of explaining that moment where you, where you feel deeply inside that something is wrong and you don't know how to fix it. And so I decided to call the album Breaking Point because I have a song called Breaking Point and it's, uh, it's, it's actually really important to actually accept your dark side. I'm a very happy person, my whole family's happy. Um, we're very positive people, but that doesn't mean that we don't have sadness and, and, and darkness. And I met, this, I met this really beautiful woman one night after a show at a bar. I like hanging out in bars after shows. I like, well, I like having drinks after shows. Okay. And uh, she was really gorgeous, like model gorgeous. And we're sitting next to each other. And at first we weren't really speaking and then you start drinking and then you start speaking to your neighbor and then you start drinking some more and then you start, you know, getting deep. And the more you drink, the more the truth you say, you know? And, uh, and I was, um, I don't know how to say that in English. I'm losing my English. I was coupable. I was guilty of judging her. I, I thought that since she was so beautiful, that life must be so easy for her. And, uh, and uh, since we were drinking and telling our truth, she told me her truth and she started telling me her story of her life and it was, it was heartbreaking. There was a lot of stuff. She'd been through a lot. And when you saw her, you would never think she had been through so much turmoil. And so when I went back to the hotel and I thought about it and I kicked my, you know, I was kicking myself because I was brought up not to judge. My parents, I mean, we're all brought up not to judge. We're not supposed to look at somebody and say, oh, I know who you are and I know your life story. And I was guilty of that. And, uh, and so to redeem myself, <laughs> I wrote a song about, about her and she was telling me how her um, mother had uh, passed away and that her father had abandoned her and that her boss was sexually harassing her and that her ex-boyfriend would beat her. It, it was just a lot, it was a lot. And she told me at one point when, after a fight with her ex-boyfriend who had beaten her really bad, she looked at herself in the mirror and she had a revelation. And she, was, she told me that was my breaking point. So that's where it comes from. It's not the psychology term of it. It's that point where you realize that you've hit rock bottom and that you need to break free from all the cycles and all the things that you've done before. So I thought it was kind of important to point to that song because I, as my mom and as, and I, as we give uh, this image of being very happy and nothing's wrong and we're very, and I am very happy and I'm very proud and, and I think we need to look at things on the bright side, but you know, just like that girl, I've had my breaking point. You know, I've reached that point where I had to be me and I had to self set myself free. So it's been a real, um, it's been a real therapy. Music can be a therapy and, it up, is, and, and up until now it's been a lot of fun and, uh, and I just figured that it was time for me to get real. Yeah. And tonight you're gonna be gonna hear this. Tonight we're gonna be playing with my fabulous band. I have a fabulous band from London since I recorded the album in London, um, and I've always been attracted to 
um, the London music scene, acid jazz. I'm a big fan of Incognito and Young Disciples and, and uh, uh, Carlene Anderson is one of my favorite singers. And, and since I reached that point of not wanting to hide anymore, I decided that I was gonna follow my dream. So I produced the album. I'm not signed. I don't have management. I'm here, I'm, I'm singing. I'm lucky that there are festivals that are willing to book me without even having heard anything. And so it's, it's, um, it should happen more often for artists to be able to do that because that's what we're here for. We're, we're here as prisms. We're all these different people and we are the prism for uh, translating emotions into notes and into words and stuff. And um, the past 10 years, I've been doing tribute albums to Dinah Washington and... Beautiful. Yeah, it's thank so you, beautiful. thank yeah, you, man. thank you. And I love paying tribute to all these wonderful women that have inspired me. Um, but I'm getting a little older. I've always written songs. And it just, it just happened. The album started out, I wanted to do a tribute to men. Bev. I, I <laughs> Jenna Moses. Wait. 